What a lovely day. And we have a new arrival to the farm. So some of you may have seen that we had a Bobcat T200 for a skid steer. And I didn't do a lot of videos on it. I did a few. And long story short on that, it was a piece of crap when we got it. The guy that sold it to us lied about it. And we tried taking it to Bobcat to get it straightened out. And they screwed us. And so it was, it was just quite an ordeal. So we finally managed to find something better, which was this. Kubota SVL 95 2S. This is a 2017. It's got, I think, 3,000 hours on it, approximately. And I've serviced it, and we've used it for a couple things, as you can see. And some of the more astute among you may notice that this is, in fact, a cat bucket. Okay, Foley Caterpillar had this, and we traded them the Bobcat, and uh, they, they gave us this. Not a straight-across trade, you know. Uh, we still owed him some money on it but that's that's all right on the Kubota not the Bobcat we're just glad to be rid of the Bobcat so um in addition to that Bobcat not running right it just wasn't big enough that T200 was a 70 horse machine this is a 96 horsepower machine and it is in actually pretty good shape whoever had it last took care of it it does have emissions on it you know death as you probably saw there with that blue cap but that's all right uh, it's got, it, you know, it'll run a long time for it. It's only got 3,000 hours on it. I'm not too worried about it. As long as we let it regen when it wants to regen and we put def in it and stuff like that, it should last us a long time. So I did service this. I changed the oil in it. And I tried doing a few other things as well. Uh, the hydraulic filter, I tried getting Baldwin filters for this. And uh, I'll open the back here. Which... That is nice right there, and just something else while we're in here before I forget. Oh, come on. Fall in there. There we go. That was a real nice feature. So, anyway, yes, I did service this. Kind of sucks, but it's uh, it's a skid steer, so, you know, that's just kind of what you run into. Um, as I was saying, I tried to get Baldwin filters for this just because they are... I have a filter dealer that's local, and honestly, the filters I can get through them are cheaper than anything else I can find anywhere, and I don't think Baldwin's a bad filter. There are obviously better filters. Somebody's going to throw a fit about us using Baldwin. Uh, but I got, I got everything except fuel filters because they're special. The air filters in this were brand spanking new. There wasn't a speck of dirt in them. They smelled new even, you know. Uh, the oil filter had not been changed in a while, uh, so, you know, I replaced that, changed the oil. The hydraulic filter from Baldwin was just slightly too long, and it's underneath the cab, and I'm not going to pick the cab up and do all that. Although the lift assist on the cab works on this machine, it didn't work on the T200, so that's awesome. But the Baldwin hydraulic filter was a little too long to fit on the Kubota here, so I'll have to find a Kubota filter for that. The fuel filters, which are, well, let's see if we can get get you down there. You've got a spin on and a fuel water separator with an element in it. And that element is ridiculously expensive. It's hard to find. Apparently my uh, filter supplier could not find it to order. He said, oh, I was looking on Amazon and stuff and you know, it's expensive as shit. So you can order it. And I'm like, well, okay, thanks. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. And, and I do, I'm not being sarcastic or anything. I do appreciate it. You know, uh, so I'll have to get fuel filters from Kubota. Not a big deal. The oil filter is back in there. We can kind of see it, sort of. Uh, servicing this really isn't too bad. This radiator, you take three bolts out, this thing slides back and then tips back. Makes it really easy to get in here and get to stuff. For a skid steer, okay, I mean, it's still, you know, being a skid steer, it's, uh, it's always going to be a pain in the butt to get to stuff. But so far, this is a lot easier to mess with than that Bobcat. They mounted the engine lengthways instead of sideways, which, oh my gosh, that's nice. Uh, I wish that they had done that on the T200. would have made things easier. But it made it more compact when you mount it sideways, a lot like in a car, you know. So this engine here is a V3800. It's a Kubota motor. 
and these little Kubota diesels, they will run forever. That's what that 743 Bobcat we have, that's what it has in it, is a Kubota. I don't, it's not a 3800, I want to say it's like a 1706, a V1706, I could be wrong, I don't know, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, good, good motor, good machine, low hours, tracks are in good shape. If anybody watched the videos I made on that Bobcat, the tracks were really rough, um, Ever, you know, all the hydraulics and stuff work on this just fine. Of course, on the T200, they did as well. Just a lot beefier, a lot beefier arms on it. The couplers for the hydraulic, uh, for your attachments work a lot better. This has hydraulic quick attach, which is so nice. I used to think, oh, what's the big deal? Just flip a couple of levers down. But on that T200, the problem was those levers were sacked out, and, and so it was always a pain to get everything to attach. This is so nice, and it's it's just a button. Extremely nice. The, the Japanese put a lot of thought into this when they were designing it, when they were building it. They have a lot of considerations in here that I very much appreciate. One of the first things I noticed was that the door does not open like a traditional door. It actually, and I, I don't know if I can do it one-handed. Hang on. Hang on here. Sit down there for a second. There. It opens like so up into the cab, which is very nice. Of course, you can lock it in place here. And we were just uh, we were just messing with these because this side was wanting to stick. It was making it kind of hard to deal with. Got a little release right here for you to fold it down from the outside. Joystick controls, as you may have noticed. One side steers, the other side runs the bucket and the attachments. It's very nice. We'll sit in here in a second. Very spacious, you know, the seat's bigger, uh, the arm rests slash safety bar, much, much better. It has heat and air, which is awesome. I love heat and air. I'm sick of eating dirt. I've had enough of it. I'm not interested in it. So a fella sits down in here. Good room in the floor. They gave you, that comes out so you can blow your floor out, clean it if you need to. That just goes right to the outside. Accelerator pedal, if you need it. Throttle right here. Okay. Real nice stuff. So, this side runs your bucket. And this side steers. Horn. Uh, two speed is the trigger. Back on that side. Very nice. The HVAC does not move any air. I'm just going to say it that way. It technically moves air, but it doesn't move enough air to do much of anything. I think the air conditioning does work. It just, I, I'm pretty sure the evaporator core is plugged. Something's plugged because it doesn't matter if I have it on heat or cold. It does not move any air. And I tried blowing it out. That's part of the reason it's so dusty in here. Uh, I tried blowing it out and I got a lot of dust out of the HVAC compartment, which is just behind the seat here. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to have to come out and be thoroughly cleaned and inspected the blower motor works i mean it spins fine and i don't think it's overly dirty it just i, I don't know and i tried i checked all the uh cabin air filters both of them they are not they're hardly dirty at all so i don't know if the previous owner just changed them before he sold this or what i i don't know what's going on i'll have to look into that i need to find a service manual for this so i know how everything comes apart i don't know if I don't know where I'm going to go to get one. I'm going to have to go to Kubota, and they may not sell me one. But back to uh, the features. You fold your armrest down here. This is so much more comfortable. They probably made this uh, with um, with the idea in mind that Americans are very, very wide as a general rule, if you know what I'm getting at. Uh, but the controls are very, I mean, they're pretty easy to access. Light switch, park brake. Uh operator switch your you know your press this to run type of deal and your quick attach button is right here under this cover so that there's no chance of you accidentally hitting it while you're running windshield wipers uh your cancel for your regen if you need to cancel the regeneration for the dpf for some reason the washer fluid is you know out of the way if the hvac was working correctly you could easily switch this from inside recirculation to outside fresh air. Right now I've got it set on recirculation just because. Cup holder, 
which is back out of the way where your arm and stuff would be. I mean, it's a very, it's a very thoughtfully designed machine. It's a very comfortable machine. It's a very powerful machine. Uh, the two speed flick of a button, you go faster if you're sitting and you're just running the bucket or an attachment or something and you want to throttle down and then just give it give it fuel when you need to run something and move a little faster. I mean, this little pedal here is very nice feature, very nice addition. I I did like on the Bobcat that you had the foot controls. It was nice to be able to use your feet to run it. But these joysticks, they, they're a lot different, but I think once I get used to them, I'm going to be so much more efficient with this Kubota than I would ever have been with that uh, with that Bobcat. And it's, it's just going to be... It's just going to be a lot nicer. So, yes, this is bigger, more powerful, newer, better. How many hours are on this, actually? I'll We'll just double check here. There you go, 3,070. Very, very nice. Very nice. Now, something that I noticed right off the bat was when I shut this off, I would hear something whirring back in the uh, engine compartment, and I was reading in the operator's manual, which... I found one for free and downloaded it and printed it off and put it in page protectors and they freaking had one behind the seat. So I'm probably going to take that inside actually. It doesn't need to sit out here. But, uh, oh, hello cat. Decided to join us again, did you? You look dirty. Can you explain that? Yeah, I'd run away too. Uh, anyway, the whirring that it was back here, I was reading in the operator's manual, that this actually pulls the diesel exhaust fluid out of all of the lines and back into the DEF tank so that it doesn't like corrode those lines and that DEF injector or freeze because DEF freezes at like, uh, I think 12 degrees Fahrenheit. It freezes. Of course, a third of it's water or it's two thirds water. I, I don't remember. Probably should go look, but that was a nice feature right there because that's a lot of issues that people have with uh, DEF systems is that that fluid just stays in there and it's it's corrosive you know and yeah i'm pretty sure most people watching this are gonna be like oh that death just a scam and and i agree with you but i'm not gonna go on a tirade about it right now um they've got the emissions on these machines by 2017 you know like i said this one is they had the uh, the DPF and the selective catalyst reduction and all that stuff. They have it straightened out to where it, it actually works pretty good for quite a while before it gives you problems. Yeah, it's still another system that has a bunch of failure points. Yes, it's super expensive. No, I don't like it. Yes, I think it's stupid. But it's not as problematic as the early emission systems uh, that they put on machines. And uh, it's just, yeah. So before we go into that, we'll just move on. Uh, actually, I think that's it. I say move on. I'm pretty sure we're done. It's it's pretty easy to service. It's easy to get to everything. The only complaints that I really have so far, it's not really all that difficult to change the filters, really. They made the radiator, you know, able to come out and everything so that you didn't have to uh, maneuver in there the hard way. You don't have to drain the radiator to service anything. But it is, it sucks to put oil in this. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're going to have to get a special funnel designed. It's not that, it's not that the hole here is, is too small. It's just that, of course, it's at the, there we go. It's not that the hole is too small for adding oil. It's that there's no good way to put a funnel in this, right? And then get oil in it. And your dipstick is down there. Not, not bad. But yeah, so as you can imagine, when you, Hi, what do you want? Yeah, don't, hey, don't do that. Because that, that's not, that shock isn't very stable. I don't want you to crush my hands while I'm working on this. Okay. Hey. Kevin, you silly cat. Anyway, back to the point. As you can imagine, getting a funnel in here, even if it's one of those short funnels, well, you stick it up, well, it hits the hits the frame, then it hits the condenser. So it's it's really hard to put oil in this. I'm gonna make a custom funnel, and I'll get it straightened out to where one man can do it without making a mess everywhere, 
and it'll be pretty foolproof. And then I'll set it aside and it'll only be for, well, it might be for the 875 as well to add hydraulic fluid because Versatile did not put their dipsticks in very intelligently for the hydraulic fill and the transmission fill. So it may double for that in addition to engine oil for this Kubota, but uh, that's, that's not too bad. So really those are all the big things I can think of. Uh, it should be a pretty solid machine for us. And what this means, the reason I'm doing a video on it and I made it like this going around it and all is because, well, one, I'm not going to do a lot of videos about this just because I, I've never worked on one of these. And so if I do have to work on it, the camera's not coming out most likely. Second reason is now that we have a skid steer, that's not a complete pile of garbage. What that means is that we can do a lot of cleanup around here and, and move forward on all those projects because I don't know if you noticed or not, but we have moved some of the junk iron. This was a few months ago, and I never did get around to doing a video. Probably going to do that video when I'm done with this one, right? And I mean, we still got more to move, but now that we have a skid steer that can do all that, we're going to do all that. And what that means for you guys that watch this channel is that uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of interesting content, probably an engine rebuild over the winter because we'll have that shop cleaned out because we have a skid steer that we can use to move that car and do all this other cool stuff. And, you know, really, really cut a fat hog in the ass, if you know what I'm saying. So I, uh, like I said, I think that covers everything. I'm very excited about this. Um, at the time we got the T200, we actually were looking at Kubotas, but they were just too expensive and we couldn't, we couldn't pencil it out at the time. A couple years later, we're in better shape to where, you know, everything just lined up right and this worked good for us. So I imagine we're going to have this for quite a while. And if anything breaks on it, well then by golly, I will fix it. And that's going to sound like fun, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to break. Uh, oh, here we go. Knock on wood. I don't think it's going to break very often. So anyway, I will get off of here. I hope you guys kind of found this cool. I hope you're kind of excited or you can appreciate the excitement anyway. And I'll just get some other videos out that are a little more interesting. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch you in the next one.